Welcome back to another Kitchen Table Talk with Blinds on the Fly. Whoop, whoop. After two and a half years and five rentals in Ecuador, we realized one thing. <laughs> Renting sucks. <laughs> So if you are coming from the States and you have owned your own house for a long time and you're coming down here and you're thinking you, you are going to rent, we are sharing this video for you because we're sure renting is kind of stressful and uh, comes with challenges no matter where you are in the world. Here, the difference is the laws are really set to protect the renter. And I think, you know, if you're a gringo coming down to invest in a property or rent your property out until you decide to move back in. There are things you need to know about what is legal and acceptable to the law in your lease. And if you're coming in like us and you are renting, then you need to know that you have rights too. So after five signed leases, we finally decided it might be a good idea to sit down with an expert in renters laws and rights and Santiago Andrade was kind enough to answer all of our questions. So lawyers here are not the same as the U.S. They're not chasing ambulances. They're not, um, you know, posting the same ridiculous advertisements on TV all the time for turning your wreck into a check. So it's a different thing to know and appreciate and to use, you know, for your advantage, really, and everybody's advantage, because it puts a lot of things on an equal playing field here. Uh, my name is Santiago, Santiago Andrade. Um, I am an attorney. Uh, I've been practicing law the last 15 years. We've been practicing basically in Otavalo, in the majority in, in Otavalo, Quito, Cotacachi. Our field expertise uh, it's in immigration. We do uh, uh, immigration law, such as visas. Uh, we also uh, counsel the clients in, in um, in importing household goods. So those are my expertise fields and uh, I'm happy to be with uh, you today. We've been serving the expat community probably since day one of my practice of law. The law for rental agreements, it's uh, sometimes seen as a tendency to be more towards the benefit of the tenants instead of the landlord. And I would agree in that comment because remember our constitution uh, of Ecuador uh, provides and protects um, the housing and, and the right to live in a, in a, in a, in a place uh, under uh, securities, under good conditions. So yes, it's very towards the tenants instead of the landlords. There is no difference between verbal agreement versus writing contract. The law recognizes both equal validity and legal capacity. Now, when it comes to signing a leasing agreement, I would highly recommend to have on writing. The residential uh, uh, lease holds and protects at least a minimum term of two years, okay? Although your landlord would say, no, I am going only to rent you for one year, for uh, or for eight months, two months, three months, uh, and you would agree. Uh, remember that it's your right to be in the house or in the condo or in the unit for two years. The law protects you towards that end. The first thing you want to know is who is the owner, okay? And who actually holds the real capacity to sign the contract. Also, you want to pay attention that when you receive the unit or the house, all the utilities are paid up to the date or the month that you begin the rental. An HOA uh, uh, administration, you want to pay attention to the internal regulations because the internal regulations and the internal bylaws, they govern the unit. So if you actually, within the period of time you're renting, you appear to have a pet, that could be a problem 
and the landlord could take you to court and to finish the contract because it was not approved in the contract in the very first place. The, the other thing that I would pay attention to is that uh, if, the, if the unit or the, the, the property is not embargoed or has any liens on it uh, and, it's, uh, and it has all the things that you need to live well in the, in the unit, for instance, water, electricity, telephone maybe, or internet, uh, uh, internet service, a guard, alarm system, those are the things that you want to pay attention when it comes to, to rental agreements. There is a market for renting, okay? There is a market for renting. But uh, I would say pay attention of how much, you've been, uh, uh, how much you've been charged when you pay rent. Of course, when you rent a house and it, it's totally furnished uh, uh, with uh, probably high-end uh, uh, um, uh, um, furnishings and, 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 and electronics, it's a little bit higher, but uh, just, just compare the market, compare the market. Uh, this is again a commutative contract with, where the landlord and the tenants, they have equal rights and, and, and they have to show good faith. I would say before they sign, make a walkthrough, okay? Um, Say you are renting the house with, uh, with, with uh, furnishings or with equipment or with a TV and say out of the blue the TV it's, it's burnt or the refrigerator stops working. Does it have any guarantee? I mean, it, because it's not your responsibility to repair it when you did nothing to damage it. It's the owner's responsibility, okay? I would strongly recommend to do that, to walk, uh, to make a, to perform a walkthrough, uh, to visit the premises, consult uh, the, if you're renting in a horizontal property regime type of uh, HOA, consult with the administrator. The administrator can be really helpful because probably he's going to collect the dues, probably he's going to collect the rent. Um, He's going to give you the information uh, of security or the conditions of the house, how old is the house, things like that. Make sure that you have that information to enter a contract. After you've done your due diligence, again, I strongly recommend that an alternative, instead of putting in the contract that you waive jurisdiction to a court, try to go through a mediation center. Try to go to an arbitration center because through an arbitration and mediation, it's faster, it's simpler, it's less aggravations, it's less problems because through court, you're going to be spending quite some money and you're not going to see a result probably in some time. But if you go through mediation centers, use that, use that, make sure that that's on writing. Make sure that you have the contract written and accepted by both parties. I beg you to do that before you sign it, okay? Make sure that you open your mouth. If you say something and that is going to affect the, the relationship with your landlord or tenant, make sure that those gray areas are written properly. That way, when there is something in the future, you go to your contract. Remember that the contract, it's law by the two parties. It's accepted. You signed and you agreed on the terms and conditions, okay? Remember, there are some terms and conditions that will not be affected by the contract, such as the time of the lease agreement. One year for commercial, two years for residential, okay? Make sure that when you enter a, a contract, a rental agreement, these questions are asked, okay? Feel free to ask these questions to your landlord because this is, I would say, this is kind of marrying someone for the next one year or two years because 
they don't want you to damage your property, their property. And I, and, and I have to accept that because we have to be on both sides of the river. I have seen really ugly situations in both sides of the river. Landlords with good faith not receiving one dime and the house destroyed. Then what? It's not only the tenant, it's also both parties. So a red flag for me in, 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 other, in either way would be if the landlord will not be open to discuss the terms and conditions as specifically they have to be, to be transformed into a document. Talk to the tenant, talk to the landlord, and do not leave any gray area. I strongly recommend that because that is going to save you a headache and problems in the future. That's my, 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 my advice uh, for landlords and tenants. Sometimes when you have uh, uh, adjacent properties or houses or, you know, there are some unique properties that for some reason uh, they share spaces with other units, okay? And uh, make sure that you have the areas that you are allowed to use, okay? Make sure that you understand and put on writing the questions that you, you need to ask before you sign the lease agreement, okay? But say you, you have not paid the, 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 the rent for the last two months. The landlord can terminate the contract. But that doesn't mean that the landlord can come with, I don't know, to show up in your front door and say, well, the, the contract is, is done, you have not paid, and I want you to be out tomorrow. No, it doesn't work that way. The only authority, the only law, and the only person that can evict you from the property, it's a judge decision. It's a court decision. Say the house is residential, but you ended up putting a shop. Okay? So you are not aligning with the social objective of the contract. It's written in the law. If you change that, the landlord can terminate unilaterally. All the things where, where the landlord can unilaterally terminate uh, the contract is when he has sold the house or the property is being transferred to another, uh, uh, to another owner. But in any case, you have 90 days to vacant the property. It doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, acts of violence. Okay, violent acts that takes place inside the community, inside the unit, that it's actually molesting or or bothering your next door neighbor. Okay, our people getting drunk on the streets and things like that. You know, those are the things that we categorize as algazaras y reyertas, uh, contesting, uh, fighting, mm -hmm. violence. Okay, and and of course the constitution. Remember. Uh, provides it has a provision that you should live in, in a wealthy, peaceful environment. So when you break that law, that's another reason why why the landlord could could terminate unilaterally. Another reason probably would be where the unit or the property becomes in a, such a poor structural condition that it would damage or it's put in your physical in jeopardy. The, the, the tenant could break the law, I mean, not the law, but the, the, the rental agreement um, when his circumstances have changed from when he signed the original agreement. You may want to put an article in the lease agreement that gives you that window open. Say that if within the period of time of the rental agreement, your personal circumstances change because you have to work in the abroad or you want to move to, uh, from one city to another city, uh, you will notify the landlord at least with 90 days or at least with 30 days, but 90 days is the common terms, to notify and say, no, I don't want to continue with with the rental agreement. 
Uh, there is room for that and I would strongly recommend again use that room, use that window, you use your capacity of even bargaining the rent, even uh, you know negotiating the terms and conditions. What I would say is present your conditions, present your reality, your your current situation to the landlord because this is a mutual agreement. The contract under Ecuadorian law it's it's what we call communal. It's commutative, okay? So one party has the same rights as the other party. So, for instance, if you want to rent for only one year, maybe the landlord wants to, wants to rent for a long term, longer than one year, but it doesn't fit your requirements for, for, for that uh, uh, period of time. So I would say make, make all the questions, come to an agreement, make all the, all the, all the uh, details, put on the table and work with the landlord and make sure that when it comes to a final agreement, put that on writing, put that on writing to protect uh, both uh, best interests. Mm -hmm. Go to the legal counsel of your confidence and talk to the legal counsel. Okay. Tell him or tell her what are you looking for and what are the rental agreement came to the conclusion and came to the agreement. Transform that on writing and take it three original copies signed by the landlord and the tenant and take it to the notary public. The notary public is now the authority. They have the legal mm -hmm. capacity to keep in their records the protocol of the registered contracts. Now, you have to understand that it's the right for both parties. I want to make sure this is a commutative contract. One contract stays with the notary public. It's the registered. One, 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 one copy stays with the notary public. There are two more copies. One is given to the landlord and one is given to the tenant. Okay? Now, if by any given reason, the tenant is not given or provided a contract, you can always go back to the notary public where you sign the contract and request and ask for one because these are public records. Okay, So that's how you register a contract. The law says that it has to be registered. Well, if it's not registered, it does, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not legal. The problem is that when you want to take the contract Say at the end you have problems with the landlord or with the tenant and you ended up in court. If the contract is not registered, it will not stand in court because the law says that it has to be registered. Okay? So it's a formality, it's a technicality, it's, in, it's also in the law. So I would say better comply with the law. What I charge for, for a, a rental agreement, it, it varies between $30 up to $50. It's not that much, okay? $50 if the, really the contract has more than 20 articles and a stipulation, and it has a contents of listings because the, when the house comes with furnishings, with furniture, uh, cameras, internet providers, refrigerator, what conditions you want to put list. So it's more complicated, but a very straightforward contract with uh, specific uh, stipulations and, and terms and conditions, I would say $30, no more than that. The notary public charges, um, they have a scale to charge uh, based on the, on the rent. It doesn't go higher than $60. So I would say between notary public fees and uh, um, uh, attorney fees, I would say $90, $100 it's worth the expense to prevent you have headaches in the future. Who has the capacity to have access to the camera or to the surveillance video, okay? If you don't feel like you feel you would have to tell the, the, the property manager or the landlord that either to disconnect those cameras inside the unit or to give you full access and privacy to, to have the only access to, 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 those, to those cameras. 
And if they reject that, feel free to disconnect and to unplug because your intimacy and your uh, security is in jeopardy and you are protected by the law for, uh, for that kind of intimacy protection law. No, they, they cannot tell you, oh, you have to have the camera on. The law stipulates that a deposit can be made uh, for guaranteeing the, 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 the contract. It has become customary in the last years that to protect the landlord, they require a two month rental deposit. No more than two months. Sometimes they require three months. I would say that's exaggerating. That's too much. Two rental month agreement, it's fine. The law opens the window for a guarantee. It's called guarantee. Okay. A guarantee for what? And what I recommend is put that on writing. A guarantee for what? For damage of the house, for damage of the property. Looking from the landlord uh, perspective uh, to protect his rights or her rights for the tenant not to live without paying the rent or the utility, the utility bills until the last days of occupancy. Maybe that's what you want to put that on writing. But there's no such thing as, oh, you have to pay two months in ahead of time as a rental uh, a deposit. No, it, it doesn't really say that. It says a guarantee and you stipulate the amount. But as I said, customary in the last years, it's two months rental deposit. The, the guarantee deposit, it covers damages of the property, damages of the premises. If it's furnished, okay, fine. If it's a, if it's a chair or it's a carpet and, you know, pets can damage because if you have dogs or if you have cats, they, I don't know, the common, it's the, they, they pee or they scratch the, the Make sure that either you're on the landlord side or the tenant side, you want to make sure that if that happens, you are responsible for replacing or covering the expense of the damage verified. Okay, it's not that the landlord can tell you, oh, this costs a thousand dollars, you have to pay. No, it has to be verified. But no, there is no such thing as a pet deposit, it's not a stipulated in the law. The guarantee two month rental deposit guarantee, that's what it covers those uh, angles of pet deposit. Mm. Ninety days before the rental agreement is up, no one, neither the landlord or the tenant, has made any notifications to the other party saying that they don't want to renew the rental agreement it's understood that the rental agreement has been renewed automatically under the same conditions and terms rent and uh, whatever conditions you stipulated in the contract okay so we always say 90 days Depending on the landlord, again, the landlord can, can, can say, no, I, I'm planning on using the, 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 the unit or I don't want to renew it. Uh, this is my statement or my formal notification for you. By doing that, you simply write an email to the agreed and accepted uh, email address and you tell the landlord that you don't want to renew the contract and that you're going to empty and vacant the unit when the contract is up. That's when the two parties would start talking each other and to say, okay, make sure that I receive the electric and all the utility bills paid up until the very end of your occupancy. I want to make sure that the house you received is in this, under the same conditions and circumstances. Uh, would you like to make a, a walkthrough a week before, a month before? Now, I want to, I want to emphasize and to also to let the tenants know this. The law also says that you are not responsible to repair or to, I would say, to, uh, to fix the things that normally get... Uh, um, 
damaged or, or affected by the normal usage of the thing. That's not your responsibility per se to repair it. So uh, when it comes to, to, to finishing up in good conditions and good faith in terms and conditions of the rental, I would say talk to your landlord, talk to your tenant, uh, work amicably, uh, make a walkthrough 30 days before you leave and you vacant at the property. It's, I would say, 30 days in advance. Remember that the landlord, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or, the, but I've seen it. I have been serving the expat community quite some time to tell you this, but the landlord will do as much as he can for not returning the deposit, okay? And he will say, no, the window is not in good condition or I'm missing a pair of keys or I'm missing this or the, this has a scratch or things like that. And they will try to, to fix it on their own. And sometimes they, they we call it, uh, they pad it, the, the, the estimate from the maestro or the painting. In the contract, it has to be stipulated. It's normally stipulated that you will return the property in the same conditions that you received it. Okay, what I, would, what I would do is not to pay the rent the last two months, or at least not one of the last two months, because you have a two month rental deposit, or if you have three month rental deposit, which is unlikely the case, but say you have a three month rental deposit. I would say I would formally communicate through an email saying that you are not going to renew the contract, okay? Mm -hmm. And number two, that since you have a deposit of two months, you are not going to pay the rent of this month and to meet with the landlord or in the owner of the property manager in the last month to adjust any damage or any unpaid bill. Okay. It really requires a good faith from both sides to come to a happy ending. At the end, I would have to say, based on the experience in the last 15 years and more, sometimes the tenant loses a few bucks, it's probably $50, probably $30. Try to lose as less you can. But also we have had uh, experiences in, 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 in where the tenants actually do not pay the rent. Okay, and when they do not pay their rent and they leave the house, I'm paying the rent for the last eight months because the legal system, I don't know if it's the same in the US, but in Ecuador, independent in the county you are, the, there are just a few resources and in, in, in capacities in the court. So when you file the lawsuit, say I am the landlord and I want to file the lawsuit because the tenant has not paid me the rent the last three months until actually you got an eviction or a decision from court. It's been a month. It's been a year. It's a reality. It, these are facts. This is not just, oh, it just came through my head right now. No, these are facts. So looking from the landlord perspective as well, maybe you want to maybe you want to request from the tenant a letter of recommendation from the previous landlord uh, or mm -hmm. do some research or due diligence in terms of how ended up the last and previous uh, uh, agreement with with a new tenant. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's it's very towards the tenant because if the I've seen tenants leaving the houses without paying the rent for a year at steel. Okay, so that doesn't put the landlord in a good position. If the landlord says, no, I want those two month rental deposits not to be crossed with possible damages or you're not going to use those two for the last two months rentals. I say fine from the tenant perspective, fine. 15 days before the contract or 20 days before the contract is due, 
I want my rental deposit and I show you everything is in good condition. If it's not that paid and reimbursed in that date, it will be uh, taken um, with uh, interest and in, in, in court, okay? And you could stay for another two months. I try to, to put uh, conditions in the contract that it's, it's, it's protective for both parties. But yes, the, country, the landlord can stipulate that. But when the landlord stipulates that, you want to pay attention to the landlord. Maybe they want to keep the, the two-month rental deposit. Tell the judge that you did not pay the rent because you want to uh, use that as a, as a cross figure for any possible damages. Yes, you can do that in court. It's not that I can take you to court or oh, they have not paid you. It will be ridiculous to take you to court for not paying the two last month uh, 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 rental when they have a two month rental deposit. You can tell the judge, okay, you know, serve yourself. Me as an attorney, I would not recommend the landlord to take a tenant to court for not paying two last month rental when you have, that when you have the two month rental. Unless, of course, there is a damage and you want to uh, get paid for that. But if the house it's in the, the same condition that you received it, why you want to spend attorney's fees and spend probably a couple hundred dollars and, uh, and then wait probably three, four, five, six months until you get a judgment decision? I would not do that. If, I, if the broken has not been declared in the beginning of the contract, the tenant has the prerogative to fix it at their own expense and deduct it from the rental. Because remember, in the contract, you say that you have received the house in working conditions. Say you have an electric door and uh, it's not working. It's not in good condition. So you will notify the, the landlord that either he repairs it or you are going to repair it at your own expense and it will be deducted from the following month rent. In, in my case, the clients can reach me at my uh, email address uh, that I'm sure you're going to give them, also my telephone number. What they do, either on, as, a, as a landlord or as a tenant, they give me their information and I prepare the contract based on the information that they have provided to me. Okay, And I provide a copy, make them work and see if it works and meet their requirements and realities. And when it comes to an agreement, then we go to the notary public. Uh, it's, it's very, it's very uh, easy to, 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 to come to an agreement with landlords and tenants. Uh, do not be afraid. And again, um, spend a few bucks on your legal counsel, on the notary public and, and live in peace, landlord and tenant. So there are not, not great areas, um, not functioning equipment, or what happens if we, these things get lost, or the, the, the keys get broken, who's responsible, things like that. It's just common sense, it's just common sense. Um, try, to, try to work uh, uh, that way, I, that's my recommendation. So we are super grateful to Santiago for sitting down with us and having this conversation. Uh, we'll put his contact information in the description as well as a link to the actual laws for renters in both Spanish and then I'll do the translated version in English as well. If and when we do move into another place we will most definitely use the services of a professional like Santiago. Absolutely. Wounds on the fly out. Peace! Whoop, 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 whoop.